Hey, it's Luke here once again for the M5 Stack official channel. It's almost Halloween and it's going to be a bit of a different one this year. With 2020, we've seen a lot of scary things happening and not ghosts and goblins. With lockdowns and social distancing, masks and so on, Halloween is going to be a little bit different this year. But that doesn't mean that it can't still be a lot of fun. In this week's project, we're going to be using the Core 2 to create a scaring device for when the trigger cheaters come round. When the PIR gets triggered, we get a scary image and a scary sound. So let's see how we can get started in making this project. First thing we'll need to do when we start is to find an image. Uh, generally it needs to be smaller than the screen size of course which is 320 by 240. I got this image from a royalty free image website which is 250 by 250 pixels. So I simply have imported it into GIMP and it is a JPG file UIFlow does not accept JPG files, so we will then convert it to a PNG. So all we do is to scroll down there and choose PNG, then hit export, and now we're going to have a bunch of settings. Generally something I've found is even if the file is small to begin with, sometimes you can end up with a bigger PNG file, but we don't want that to happen as we have to stay within the 50 kilobyte limit. So in here we can untick a bunch of these options which take up a lot more file space than we would need and then hit export and there we can look at our file there yes it's less than 50 kilobytes. Next thing we'll need to do is to go and search for some scream sounds or some scary sounds. You can easily search for that on Google. I found soundbible.com is a good website. We can preview the sounds and then once we find one we like, just download the WAV version of it. Once you've downloaded the file, just make sure to shorten its name as generally if the file name is long, this can cause crashes. So keep it short and sweet. Next thing we'll need to do is to upload the WAV files. Now there isn't an easy way to do this through the UIFlow website so what we'll need to do is to use Tony to upload these files. So first we'll need to turn on the device then go into the applications. This is just so that we can get into the REPL on the device. It's a little bit tricky otherwise but once we're in Tony, we're in the REPL all we need to do is scroll down, find the files that we need to copy across and then what we do is to right click that file and then choose upload to flash and then we'll have a, a progress bar there to show us it's copying across. Okay now we have that file on the flash of the device next we'll go into UI flow so here we are in UI flow Make sure you choose better and that you have the latest Core 2 firmware installed. Also, let's make sure that we have selected Core 2. Okay, first thing to do would be to add the PIR sensor unit. So we'll add that first. Okay. And then we'll need to upload the image that we just created. So we'll go into add image, choose that image and then upload. Okay, now we need to go ahead and drag the image placeholder over to the screen. And now we can choose that screen picture from the drop down list. And now what we'll want to do is set the coordinates 40 here to get it into the middle of the screen. It's still loading at the moment, but we'll get a preview sooner or later. So to move on to the start, we'll want to make sure that that image is hidden. So on the start, we'll set the image to hide. 
and also I would like to set the background screen color to black since my background of my picture is also black okay now onto our main loop we'll drag that in there and what we want to do is create a simple logic loop if the PIR is triggered which uh, will require the logic block so if get PIR status is equal to 1 when it's not triggered of course it will be 0 so then when it's triggered change to 1 okay and then we'll also add the else in here so once triggered to get the image to show all we need to do is to go into image slide that in there and hit show Okay, and then when it's not triggered, we'll just set it to hide. Okay, so now that will work for the images. What we need to do now is to set up the sounds. So we're going to hardware's speaker and the only block in there now, which is simply quite straightforward. All we need to do is type in the name of our file. So I've put three files in there. Select one for now. And because this uh, file uh, is going to take some time to play, at least a couple of seconds, we'll also add in a delay here. So I'm going to set this to about three seconds. Okay, so that should work quite nicely. Alternatively, if we've uploaded a bunch of WAV files and we want to randomly choose between them so that we don't have the same old scream sound every single time, what we can do is to create a list, assign that to a variable. So I'll just call this screams. Okay, and then set screams and then literally all we need to do is then is to uh, type in the name of our uh, specific um, file names that we've put in the the flash there so I've got three all named very similar with almost identical names okay so we'll set that in the initial setup part and then we, next we need to then go back into lists and choose this one so in list um, screams we want to get random okay now let's fire that up and see if it works Okay, and here we are. Here's a quick test. We can see that once we wave our hand over the PRR, it will play the sound and show us the image. And also we get a randomized sound. You can strap that on your door at Halloween and give people a fright. That's about all we have time for this week. Hope you enjoyed the lesson. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them down in the comments. Don't forget to like, and subscribe and from all of us here at M5 Stack we wish you a happy Halloween. Goodbye!